Zero Accounting Software 2023. Apply customer deposit or credit to an invoice. Get ready to be an accountant hero with Zero 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file, we set up in a prior presentation, that being Get Great Guitars. We're gonna duplicate some tabs to put the reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it again. Back to the tab in the middle, accounting dropdown. We want the balance sheet. Tab into the right, accounting dropdown. We're gonna pick a variant of the income statement, the comparative income statement we created in a prior presentation. If you don't have that report, you could just open a normal income statement. We're comparing January and February, February being the month we are working on. Back to the middle tab. Let's go to the drop down on the dates. We want to take a custom date here for 2023, go into the end of 2023, and we will update to get the updated report. Okay, so let's go back to the first tab now, and we're going to continue on with our scenario of our uh, customer deposit. So to uh, rethink that scenario, let's go back into our flowchart. This is a QuickBooks desktop screenshot but we're just looking it at it for the flow process remembering we're on in essence the revenue cycle and the revenue cycle will be dictated not by just how we want to do it cash versus accrual or so on but by the industry we are in but whatever system we put in place we would expect at the end of the revenue cycle the checking account to be going up for goods and services that we provided now normally what happens is we do the work at the same point in time or we do the work before we receive the money. But we had a situation at this time where we got the money first, in our case, thinking about a customer deposit. So they wanted a guitar and we said, okay, we have to order it for you or get it or whatever. In order for us to go through that hassle, we would like you to give us a down payment to show that you are committed. Therefore, we got money from the customer before we did the work and that's usually recorded as a liability right we got money we didn't do any work for them we either owe them the money back or we owe them the work or in our case the inventory the guitar so zero has a really nice system uh, for recording those unearned revenues which allows us to record it i'm going to the balance sheet as a deposit to the checking account and the other side instead of recording a negative receivable as we might do in some other softwares and have done in some comparative example problems if you're making comparisons between this and excel or a quickbooks online or something like that we could instead create this liability account which is what we should do from an accounting standpoint but which is often problematic from a sub ledger standpoint because the accounts receivable is the account that ties out to the customers. And what we want to do now is make an invoice that will then apply out the credits that are tied to a particular customer, which zero, if I go back to the first tab, is able to do, even though they created that liability instead of a accounts receivable. So if I go to the business dropdown and invoices, I can see these prepayments here. So that's great. So let's just imagine then that the process that happened, usually if they call in and they want and they want a guitar and we're gonna make an estimate, we'd probably make a quote for them, an estimate to determine how much of this down payment we're gonna have as a down payment. So for example, when Mr. Anderson here called in, we could imagine them calling in and we might create the plus button, a quote form, an estimate type form. So I'm kind of going back in time and the process that we would be thinking about here and say, okay, they're calling in Mr. Anderson and we're going to say, okay, let's make a quote for what you want. And this is going to be an 
Derson Guitars calling in and we'll say this happened on 2 Feb 25 again Feb 25 and quote number reference uh, currency branding theme project uh, we're not assigned it to a project tax exclusive all right so the item we're going to say that they want an EPSH so they said I want to pick up an EPSH and we're just going to say uh, all right, they want two of those. So now we're imagining and, and we're talking to, to them on the phone, for example, and we might make our quote instead of making an invoice to help us to determine how much that would cost, right? And then I would go down and say, okay, and they also want an ELP uh, or standard ELP, and they just want one of those. So that would come out to uh, uh, 500 and and then once we have the quote if they say okay i would like to purchase that then we might have some kind of policy which would say hey look uh what we need then is an amount down which we might have a standard like we need 10 percent down or something like that where we can try to collect on uh the down payment at that point in time with the receive money form uh that we put in place and and then uh we can record this quote if we wanted to and then when they come in to fulfill the order, we can use the quote to finish up the process. So for example, I could say, uh, we're gonna we're gonna save it. Let's save this. And so now we have our quote in place. And so then if we go into our business information up top and I look at the quotes, uh, we could say, uh, Mr. Anderson comes in and wants to finish the, the process. So we have the quote there. We saw that the prepayments were there under the uh, prepayments for the invoices. And we can also see this from, hold on, right there they are. <laughs> from the contacts, if I go to all contacts, I, I could also go to Anderson this way and check it out in here. So we're gonna say Anderson Guitars and uh, within here, we've got the quote amount and we've got the uh, prepayment that has been put in place. So now when they when they want to complete the order, we've got everything kind of in place to do that. So I think oftentimes you might do this. So now we're going to we're going to complete the order here. You might do it from this screen if they come in or you might do it from that uh, quote screen. So here we've got the quote and we can say view uh, and Let's actually go into it here. I think it's created as it's at, a, it's at a, a draft right now. In other words, if I go into the business dropdown and I look at my quotes, I can see I haven't sent it. So it's here as a draft. So let's go here and say we send it. And so I'm going to say, uh, or let's just mark it as sent. So let's cancel that. Let's just go into it and say we want to mark as sent okay boom and then i'm going to go back into the business drop down and then go into my quotes so now within the quotes it, we have it uh sent so it's sent here and then from here i can check it off and say that we're going to decline it or accept it i'm going to accept it and so that pulls it over into the accepted area. Now it's accepted. And the next thing is uh, we can, when we're done with the job, in this case, uh, filling, finishing the, the guitar sale, we can check it off and we can create an invoice from it. So let's go ahead and create an invoice from it. And then it's gonna uh, mark as invoiced. So that one's gonna be marked as invoiced. Okay, perfect. That's what we wanna do. And now it pulls it over into the invoiced area. And now we have our invoice, beautiful. So now we've got uh, Anderson. We're gonna say this is gonna be February 25, our normal invoice process. And it pulled everything in from the quote, just like we would expect. That looks great. What it does not uh, do is it is it doesn't have the credit that has applied in, that's that's automatically being apply, applied in here. However, when we, when we approve it, we should get a pop-up that says, hey, there's a credit. Do you want to apply the credit out? 
So let's just think about what gets recorded first and then we'll we'll take a look at this. So this is an invoice. It's gonna increase the accounts receivable 1,365, but then it should be decreased by that credit that we already received. The other side is gonna to go to sales, but only for the 1,300, the difference going to sales tax, liability count 65. The inventory is gonna go down by the amounts that aren't on here, but driven by the items, cost of goods sold, expense going up by that same amount, net impact on net income, the increase of 1,300 minus the cost of goods sold, also accounts receivable, it's gonna be impacted by Anderson, which should match it out against the credit after we do this. And we also then have the inventory which is going to be tracked by unit as well as dollar amount so if i say approve then let's approve it and we get this pop-up then so it says uh anderson guitars has a 300 dollars in outstanding credit would you like to allocate the credit to this invoice now remember we're using credit like if we talk to a client that's or a customer that's what we say it's a credit like it's a good thing we're going to put this credit to your account but remember it's just a debit and credit it's it's uh, on the credit side of the ledger and accounts receivable credit side of the ledger so it's a good thing for the customer because it's the deposit so we're going to say yeah allocate it out here and boom so it does so so now we've got our allocation how much do we want to allocate it allows us now to be able to take that full amount uh, or some other amount giving us some nice flexibility again more flexibility than i think some other software has such as the chief rival uh quickbooks online so we have the amount due to invoice the credit that brings the total down to 165 so we're going to allocate the credit and so so there we have it so the invoice is now updated so now we have our updated invoice that we can uh provide to the client that has the breakout of the line items down below so what's the only difference notice when we record this out this credit often kind of messes people up when you start to think about how this is going to be recorded on the financial statements because it's still just going to record the same thing we talked about before meaning increase to accounts receivable of 1365 and you're going to say yeah but they don't owe us 1365 they only owe us 1065 true but but that's because the the three hundred dollars they are they already gave us and it actually will the 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 three hundred dollars is going to be decreasing in essence the unearned revenue at this point in time so the unearned revenue is going to be decreased by the three hundred dollars uh there so and then <laughs> the other side of the transaction is going to go to revenue of the 1300 the sales tax is now broken out between those two categories still five percent uh and inventory is going to go down cost goods sold is going to go up sub ledgers for accounts receivable should now be correct uh and the sub ledger for inventory so let's check it out so we'll go on to the balance sheet and let's say update it and uh so now the accounts receivable so if i go into the accounts receivable we have an increase for the invoiced amount uh, the invoiced amount uh, for for Anderson guitars, uh, the the one three six five. So there's that. But then it actually allocated this amount out of of because this is the extra journal entry that is happening. So notice what happened here, and this is a little bit different than some techniques and other kind of software. Uh, meaning it put the full amount on the books for the 1,365, that's the full amount plus the sales tax, and then it made another transaction of the 300, which is basically decreasing the unearned revenue and recording it here on the accounts receivable. So the net then, which is the 1,065, which is the bottom line after the credit, is basically being recorded to accounts receivable at this time. Pretty cool. Okay, so then the other side of this is going to the sales. So let's go to the income statement and check it out going into the sales, if we may. And it should be just like normal sales being recorded for the sales amounts. The credit thing doesn't have an impact on this part of the transaction. And then back on over here, the difference is gonna go into the sales tax payable, just like it normally would. Uh, no imp impact on 
I mean, we're still recording the sales tax based on the, the sales numbers, uh, not taking into consideration, you know, the prepayment. We're still paying, paying it based on the sales price. And then we had the inventory is going to be going down just like normal. No impact from the advanced payment or unearned revenue on this whole side of things, you would think. So we're going to scroll down and we're going to say, Anderson, these are going down by items driven by the items back on over. If I go to the income statement, cost of goods sold is the other side there. No impact to cost of goods sold from the whole advanced thing. This is just like a normal invoice stuff here. The impact on or here, here, <laughs> the impact on uh, net income then is the just like normal, the revenue minus the expenses cost of goods sold in this case. Back to the tab to the left, we also note that the accounts receivable has a sub ledger. Let's open up the sub ledger tab to the right, right click, duplicate the tab. And let's open up a sub ledger, breaking out the receivables by customer, accounting dropdown reports. And we're gonna go down to the payables and receivable summary. And so if we go into that, then we have our receivables uh, broken out here by customer Anderson now owing us that 1065, which is what is still due after having applied out the credit on that one invoice. The sum of these totaling to the 20,876.50 that should tie out to the balance sheet of 20,876.50 and the inventory should tie out just like it normally would. So let's duplicate another report just to double check the inventory that it's doing what it should be doing too. And we're going to go to the accounting drop down reports and check out the inventory list, which is giving us a list of the inventory by unit and by dollar amount. Here's the units. Here's the dollar amount, dollar amount at five, eight, two, four, five, eight, two, four, five, eight, two, four ties out to the five, eight, two, four. There looks good. Now, if I go to the internal reporting tab into the left, and we take a look at our business drop down and we look at our uh, invoices. Now we have applied out that prepayment uh, should be applied out. So it, it's been applied out here. So Anderson has that little yellow thing indicating, I believe the prepayment applied out. If I go to the awaiting payments and we see there, there it is there. So meaning a partial payment has been made because the full invoice was more than 1065 we applied out the 300 and so we expect then uh, to be paid in the future for the remaining balance and we can just go from here like we normally would i can also go into the contacts drop down and we can go into all contacts and take a look at mr anderson here uh mr anderson causing trouble again mr anderson uh, anyways, so there we have this one and it's, it's showing the prepayment. It's showing, uh, the invoiced, uh, the invoice partially paid of the 1,365. So if I go into this item here, then again, it gives us the, the detail about the invoice, what needs to still be paid the 1,065. If I go back on over, uh, we could see that in like the summary amount that is uh, invoice awaiting payment. So again, Zero has a pretty, pretty nice system for this prepayment uh, type of situation. Uh, that's quite nice. Now, if you're following along with other software, note like, like if you're comparing this, I have some comparative uh, presentations with like a QuickBooks, uh, then, then I might, many times in QuickBooks, what would happen is in, in the receivable reports, you would have possibly uh, negative receivables. We have two other client, two other customers that we did this for, where we where we said that they had a, a prepayment. And sometimes, like in QuickBooks, oftentimes people will make negative receivable amounts because because that's how you can basically easily track things within the customer section. And so, notice if you're comparing our problems in 
uh, to, to QuickBooks, a QuickBooks problem we are working, then you have to net out at this point in time, the 20,876.50 of accounts receivable and the unearned revenue of the 450. So in our case, in Zero's case, uh, they have this system which allows us to, to break that out kind of as we go without interrupting basically the bookkeeping side of things. So that's what we will, we will do here. So that's quite nice. All right, let's open up a trial balance and see where we stand at this point in time. So we're gonna go into the uh, accounting dropdown. Let's go into our reports and type in trial balance because that's what we wanna pull it up. And if you type it, it will come. If you type it, it will come. So make sure you don't type anything scary like the mar like that giant marshmallow man in the Ghostbusters because then it'll you reap your destruction I don't know what I'm talking about. So in end of December, let's update this one. And so if you are following along and everything ties out great, uh, if you were on last time, but something's off this time, the things that we changed were, uh, we did an invoice. So the accounts receivable changed, the inventory changed, the sales tax changed, the uh, liability changed for the unearned revenue, the sales line changed, and the cost of goods sold changed. So I think it's a lot of action going on with invoices here, especially with those advanced payment invoices and whatnot. So you would think one of those might be the thing that was thrown off even though we didn't do that many forms on the data input because of the complexity of the perpetual inventory system and the advanced payments that we were putting in play. So um, uh, if there's something different, try changing the date range, drill down on the data and, and go to the source document, change the date if that's what the issue is.